A man in custody after leading police on a chase through a Reading neighborhood. When he turned himself in, what we're still learning. Parents protesting the hiring of a first grade teacher whose boyfriend is a registered sex offender. How the board didn't respond to today's comment. The Garden of Lights is looking forward to opening day. This year's new attractions, your local news starts right now. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. Good evening. Welcome to the North States News at 11. I'm Ariana Martinez. The Reading Police Department has taken a man into custody after a manhunt in Reading neighborhood. Here's some video we captured earlier today by our production assistant, Lindsay Biancolana. The Reading Police Department says a manhunt started around 530 this evening. He started running from police near an alleyway off of Chestnut. They searched for about an hour in the Magnolia area. Police say they tur he turned himself in around 730. This is an ongoing investigation. We'll keep you updated on air and online at krcrtv.com as we learn more. Parents protested the employment of a first grade teacher at Bidwell Elementary earlier this evening. The school hired a teacher who allowed her registered sex offender boyfriend on school grounds at her previous job at Columbia Elementary in Reading. A number of parents called out the school, making demands during the public comment portion of the meeting. The board heard the concerns, although no official response was given tonight. Parents say her past was not shared prior to her joining the staff. Many believe the district is ignoring the well-being of their students. Miss L taught at Columbia Elementary School in Reading before it was discovered she had secretly allowed her boyfriend, Sean Green, to volunteer on campus for over a year. Green is a registered sex offender, which according to court documents, Miss L was aware of. The outrage from parents at the time eventually led to Miss L leaving Columbia. Now, parents in Red Bluff are experiencing the same outrage after recently learning of Miss L's past. While she was not charged at a time in 2021, parents are nonetheless concerned about Miss L's presence around their children. We would like her prohibited from teaching in, in the district at all. We just feel like she's a safety risk to not only the students in her class, but all of the students at that school and in the district as well. It's my understanding that she was attend or he was attending um, like back to school nights and other school functions. I'm sure she's a nice person. Um, the school even said, you know, she's a great teacher. She's a nice person, but being a great teacher and a nice person isn't going to protect your kids when you're allowing a sexual predator around them. Calhoun says her three grade school kids were pulled out of Bidwell last Wednesday in response to this discovery. She has started a petition with other concerned parents demanding Miss L's resignation. The petition has already received about 300 signatures. Investigators are looking for any information about the recent arrest of a Gridley Middle School teacher. The investigation was launched more than a month ago on December October 12, 10th on Michelle Solis. A parent contacted authorities about explicit photos of the teacher circulating among students, along with her alleged inappropriate conduct with a teenaged former student. Solis was arrested yesterday, then booked into the Butte County Jail on felony charges of unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor under the age of 16. But it was a felony allegation in the arrest warrant for the uh, 261.5 of the penal code, i.e. unlawful sexual intercourse, also known by the lay term statutory rape. This teacher is on administrative leave. The teacher has not been teaching since these allegations first came forward. So Lise posted a $15,000 bond right after being booked. She is set to appear in court January 12th. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has just released a report finding hundreds of communities across the country over the minimum reporting levels they've recently established for PFSAs or Forever Chemicals. Reading is one of them. City administrators say the contamination was very minor as it has already been ad addressed. This report is coming out now because the EPA is establishing a minimum reporting level for these chemicals. For the first time this year, it's these new guidelines prompting Reading to test for these forever chemicals, which they found in just one well. 
one of the smallest wells, they say. Josh Watkins, head of the city's water utility, says they'd test all of the water sources in the city as part of the new guidelines. Finding only one well near Enterprise High School has levels of PFSA chemicals above the new minimum threshold. Watkins says they immediately shut down the well. They plan to investigate where the contamination is coming from. Really the only thing we can think of is possibly there is some plastic or Teflon mm -hmm. that may have fell down the well uh, you know, previously. Um, we're going to uh, take the pump out, basically they call it baling, clean out, clean out the well, make sure there's nothing in there. Ken says any exposure to residents would have been limited. The well only puts out 300 gallons of water a minute, where most of Redding's wells produce close to 1,000 gallons in the same time. The vast majority of Redding's water comes from surface sources, which were uncontaminated. The North Coast is already getting a good amount of rain. Viewer Bruce Brown sent us some pictures of flooding in King Salmon. That's just a lot of water right there. He says this is partially because of the rain, partially because of high tides. Thank you so much, Bruce, for sending us these pictures. Let's check in with First Alert for meteorologist Brian Schofield, who is giving us a look at the latest numbers of the rain and where we can expect more of the flooding, Brian. Right, and that's the canal community of King Salmon, and they have to deal with that so often throughout the year when there's high tide and uh, heavy duty rain. There has been some really good rainfall upwards of an inch in some areas. You can see, let's just zoom on in to Eureka right now. It's because we simulcast there, so we appreciate you folks in Eureka checking in with us and giving us the information when something's happening there. But just down to the south from Eureka, right there, this little area right there, that's King Salmon, and it's uh, still getting some rain, and we'll likely still see some of that flooding. It'll take a while for that to move on out. But when it does, uh, obviously, things clear out pretty well. We see that in Arcata Bottoms as well. Uh, definitely seeing Shingletown looking pretty good right now after getting a few light showers and maybe a few heavy ones too. Palisadro as well, nice stuff, I'll tell you. Los Molinos, Corning, you know, some lighter showers along Interstate 5, but really not much to speak of, enough to slick the roads in Orland as well and out through Chico. But not much. Once again, this is an all week event, so keep that in mind. We'll have showers each day, maybe not as much some days over others. I think I'll show you the days that are going to be a little drier. A uh, mix of sun and clouds will get some breaks as well, and then the thunderstorms arrive. We'll have that in your first alert forecast. Workers at all CSU campuses are protesting what they say is unfair pay. The Union Teamsters Local 2010 represents skilled trade workers. Those are people like electricians or plumbers who do a lot of the behind the scenes work on campus. They say they've reached a settlement, a stalemate in negotiations after their contract expired back in June. About 50 members were out on campus as early as 7 this morning picketing. System wide, the union has more than 1,000 members. The union is accusing CSU of, quote, bad faith bargaining and insulting proposals. They've also filed an unfair labor practice complaint due to the state board. They say in addition to, quote, unfair pay, they've also run up against challenges in applying for raises, as well as maintaining what's called emergency pay. When campus shut down for COVID, we were still here on campus. We were working uh, while everybody else was at home. Um, we got paid emergency pay during that. They want to take that away from us in this contract so that we don't have the ability to do that. So they can force us to be here. Everybody else goes home and we don't get any extra compensation for that. Besides the pandemic, they say they've used the emergency pay during events like the campfire. They foresee the pay being useful again in the future. In a statement, Chico State says they don't play a direct role in negotiations. They'll respect the right to strike. They say they hope both sides can come to a fair agreement. In a separate statement, the CSU says they're committed to reaching an agreement with the union. It did not say much more beyond that. The Teamsters Union says they might plan further strikes as needed if there is no movement on the contract. The website of a Reading food delivery service, Entree Express, says the business has closed. The North State's News' Tyler Van Dyke has been looking into the reasons. Thank you for calling Entree Express. We regret to inform you we will not be accepting any orders at this time. We hope to be able to serve you again in the near future. Thank you and take care. Reading food delivery service, Entree Express, is closed for now.
This message on their website saying, Announcement, we are currently closed and unable to accept orders at this time, but we may be reopening soon. We are very sorry for any inconvenience this may cause. Also confirming the potential closure. I went and spoke with several Reading restaurants that use the delivery service who wouldn't go on camera but said they were informed by Entree Express workers about its closing within the last two days. Some tell me they were told it could be temporary. Jason Miller of Lucky Miller's Deli put out a Facebook post Monday to let his customers know of the closure. He explains how he feels inflation of the current state of the economy are responsible for the delivery service closing. I feel the struggle. I mean, I feel it's, it used to be at the end of the month you check your numbers and feel the struggle. Now it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's really become hard. So when I talked to the owners last night, I, I, can, I can sympathize, I can relate. Um, bigger companies like DoorDash are taking people out. And it's the small mom and pop places that we're trying to severely survive right now. Totally relate. And I've had several other messages this morning on my Facebook that were like, we get it, we understand. So that's why it just needs to be put out there as local support local. Miller is also worried about what lies ahead for local businesses. That was my concern and the thing yeah. is I see darker times coming. KRCR spoke on the phone with founder of Entree Express, Jeff. He didn't want to comment at this time. Here are some sights and sounds from the Garden of Lights in Reading. Chief photographer Adam McAllister was out there earlier this evening. This year, there's new attractions, including the train town, giving you a look right there. The glowing swings, music and animation, plus VIP igloos. Don't those look so cool? Every year, the Garden of Lights fills our hearts with joy around Christmas time. Opening day is November 17th. Tickets are on sale right now. We have more information on our website.